Lecture 41, T and P Axes Fault movement is often visualized in a so-called T and P axis diagram. Figure A shows a fault with slicken fibers or striae indicating reverse sense of movement. The fault pole on the hanging wall slip direction define a plane, which is called the movement plane or M plane. In figure B, the fault plane, the striae, and the fault pole are plotted on a stereo net. The fault pole and the striae define the M plane, which is the dashed great circle in the stereo net. On the movement plane, and 45 degrees from the striae in the slip direction, we plot an axis called the T axis. Also, on the movement plane, and 45 degrees from the striae, in a direction opposite to the slip direction, we plot an axis called the p-axis. The t and p-axis are nothing but the axis of the infinitesimal strain ellipse. t is parallel to the infinitesimal maximum extension, and p is parallel to the infinitesimal maximum shortening. If we have a population of faults formed during the same geologic event, we can plot their striae, slip vectors, t, and p-axis, as indicated in the figure. We can then color the quadrant on which most of the t-axes are. This can also be done for the first arrivals of an earthquake to different seismologic stations worldwide. Each station will plot in the stereo net according to its latitude-longitude coordinates, and if the first arrival of the earthquake p-wave pushes the ground up, the station will be marked as a t-axis, or if the earthquake p-wave pushes the ground down, the station will be marked as a p-axis. This type of diagram is humorously called a beach ball diagram. It is a fantastic way to represent earthquakes. Figure A is a beach ball diagram. You can think of the lines separating the T and P quadrants as potential faults. As shown in figure B, slip on any of these two faults will generate extension in the T quadrants and contraction in the P quadrants. If the fault strikes east-west, the fault is right lateral, as shown in figure C. If the fault strikes north-south, the fault is left lateral, as shown in figure D. Any of these two cases, C or D, will generate extension along the northeast and southwest, T quadrants. These are beach ball diagrams for normal, vertical, reverse, and strike-slip faults. Please study these diagrams carefully. The rightmost figure shows that the P and T axes are not the same than the principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 3. What kind of faults are these? Figure A is a normal fault, the T axis is subhorizontal. Figure B is a thrust fault, the T axis is subvertical. Both faults have a small component of strike-slip displacement. These are two catastrophic earthquakes on the Enriquillo Plantin Garden Fault System, in Haiti. The 2010 Haiti earthquake is the deadliest earthquake in the 20th and 21st centuries. Can you tell from the beach ball diagrams in which direction the fault move? The movement of the fault is left lateral. This is consistent with the kinematics of the Northern Caribbean plate, which moves east with respect to the North American plate. To learn more about this, read Chapter 10 of Fossen and do his e-learning module on fault kinematics. Also, answer these questions. <laughs>